I had just asked for someone to come into the classroom to substitute while I went on a, an appointment. And I had my literacy rotations ready to go. And when the teacher, when I came back the next day, she left a message and then she ended up calling me. She said, you know, I didn't even need to be there. The children knew exactly what to do. They went from run, one rotation to the next and I just watched. She said they were they did it in such an orderly fashion. They seemed to enjoy what they were doing. And that's what you're going to see here. When you set up literacy rotations, the children are really in control of their learning. So you're going to love it as we continue to move forward. All right, so we've had our we've had our welcome. And so these literacy, excuse me, rotations will be using the three angels for kids curriculum. But one of the amazing things about the rotations is you can use them with any, any curriculum. So once you complete our curriculum, which is a two to four week curriculum, you'll be able to continue using it throughout the remainder of the year with whatever reading program and literacy program you are using. So tonight we're going to talk about how to and what to do when it comes to literacy rotations. Literacy, what is it? So many times we hear people say reading rotations. Well, literacy includes reading, but it's also listening. So children learn their listening skills, writing and speaking. So what are literacy rotations? Now, this is a program that you set up in your classroom that enables your student to reach his or her potential. And they will be engaged in activities at their level of development. So we know that in every classroom, whether it's multi-grade or not, so the students will be working on activities on their level. So I mentioned that whether you have multi-grades or one grade, you're always going to have students that are below grade level, on grade level, and above. So we make sure we have activities that will be challenging and interesting for those children. Then it's also a program that provides a variety of, act of activities covering every aspect of literacy. So what is the purpose? Why would we even think of having a literacy rotation program? Well, we want to make sure we reinforce the concepts that we're teaching in the classroom. So whenever you set up a rotation program, you have already taught the skill and it's placed in a station so that children can, um, those skills can be reinforced or extended. Then we wanna make sure to provide activities that are on a multi-level so that we accommodate all the learners in our classroom, whether they are above grade level or below. So we have, we make sure we have activities for reinforcement as well as activities that will encourage growth. And then we want to provide students with activities that are completely independent. They can work on them independently because there will be times when you will call students together and you're working on your guided reading. And during that time, you do not want to be interrupted at all. So we'll talk about how we set those up and show you why they'll be able to do this independently. Now, ladies, if you would like to um, interrupt at any time, please don't wait till the end when I ask for questions. Um, you can ask me questions at any time. Now, what are the steps in starting a program? Okay, first, and maybe you've done this already. Many times I, I do this the beginning, the first week of school, we assess our students. We find out um, what group they would be in because we're going to group our students heterogeneously. So we wanna make sure we have all different levels in a group. You might be using uh, Jerry Johns, you might be using Dibbles or um, any other type of assessment program that uh, your school might be using. So once you assess your students and you know where they are as far as their literacy is concerned, you select a management system. And we'll be talking about that a little later and create a visual so that your students know exactly what to do. 
and then you will train your students in how to use each one of the stations that you've set up in your classroom. And then of course, you're going to practice with your students so that they know exactly what to do. So as I mentioned, you're going to have a heterogeneous group at each station. So if you have the high level learners along with the low level and those that are on, on grade level, they will be able to help each other learn. Now, does the teacher read with every child every day? No, not necessarily when we have our rotations. Now this right here is a visual for um, a student that's in the red group. And many times these are colors that we ha I have used um, in, in during for several years, really. We have the red group, but those are usually my students that need extra special help. All right, it's if you think of a red light, those are the ones stop, we need to review, stop, we need to reinforce. Then um, I use yellow, yellow means caution, just need, a, they, they need a little help, but that red group, I'm gonna read with them every day. Yellow group, I'm gonna read with them every day also. Then we have the green group um, and there, that means go, okay? I so have that, a question, are, what, yes. are we supposed to see the yellow and the green? Cause it's still on red. No, no, right oh, now. Okay, all right. But thank you. That was a great, that was a great question. Okay. And so you notice here with this particular visual, it has um, a little book, which is read with teacher every day. But your blue and green, blue means they're just sailing through the sky. They're just going. You might only read with them two to three times a, uh, a week. Same thing with the green group. So now we talked about having a management program, but before we do that, we have to train our students and you have to look at your center and you say, hmm, this particular station, how many children do I want to be here at one time? All right. How much time would I want them to spend? Most of the time with reading rotations, we spend 20 minutes in each area. That gives them time to arrive, start the activity, and then actually to be engaged and then be ready to move to the next center. So that's 20, 20 minutes in each center. Now with our um, um, Three Angels program, we have four centers. So when you look at that, 20, 40, 60, 80, so that's an hour and 20 minutes that you're doing your rotations. And usually in, uh, when I have had set up, when I have set up my reading in my classroom, I have two hours set aside for literacy, which includes my phonics program also. So that still leaves time for whole group instruction in that area. So then you have a signal. How will they know when to move? We'll talk about that. And then visuals to help them to be able to self-manage, to know exactly where to go and when. So this is a management system that I have used. And there are several, I love the wheel. And so it, you notice that you have your reading groups here. I have the student's name in on the sheets so that they know exactly who's with them, what group they're in. This, this particular year I had um, the bears, that was my theme in my kindergarten and first grade classroom. And then those same areas we have, whether or not they were working with their writing or letter recognition, whatever it was, we moved that circle. And I'm going to talk about that, how we move the wheel and what the students should be doing. Here's another rotation wheel. You see the colors there and the various activities that the students will be engaged in. This is another year when I had sports as my theme and you see where the, wherever that color is, the students in that color, that's where they would be during that time. After 20 minutes, I rotate the wheel so they know exactly where to go. At this time, I don't have the names. I didn't have names on the, on the cards as of yet. This was at the very beginning of the year. Now, so either do either one of you have pre-K in your classroom? No, I have three to five. Three to five? And uh, was that Tricia? Or yes, Annette? it is. Okay, Annette, what grades do you teach? I teach one through eight. 
one through eight. All right. Mercy. So, I oh. know. God bless you. God bless you. Lord have mercy. I, I respect <laughs> teachers at those grade levels, but I have seen it done and they run so smoothly. And mm. the older students are able to assist in teaching the younger students. And that will work out so well with rotations because different grade levels can be working working on different um, uh, literacy skills and they can also assist each other. That's something I'd like to talk about. Okay, so for pre-K, <clears throat> pardon me, the pre-K stations, I'll just skip right through that since we don't have pre-K, but we make it very simple for them using pictures and numbers and with their vocabulary cards, you'll notice here that um, there are pictures, the word is there and the picture to make it easy for them to know what that word is. Now the skills that are taught in K2 curriculum with the three angles for kids, as far as illiteracy and integrating that um, with Bible and reading, we have vocabulary. We learn about syllables, contractions, sentences, sequencing, recall, different features when it comes to reading text, and then we're going to look at shared reading, guided reading, and shared guided writing. And then, of course, listening skills as we discuss our reading rotations. Now, this is in my, my classroom. This is showing some of the uh, vocabulary words and contractions that we're using at that time. This is all included in the Bible program, Three Angels for Kids. So that Bible is integrated in the literacy program for the lower grades. So the rotation stations for K2, sentence strips, and we'll be talking about that, vocabulary cards, skills and concepts, um, listening center, which are the stories that um, are in the program, then the puppet pals or puppetry, and then reading with the teacher. So our two, we have two anchor books, and one of them is Three Angels in the Sky. That's the first book that the children will read. And it is so interesting because this book is so well written by Dr. Duran. And by the time they complete this book, they know it by heart. <laughs> the children are able to recite it. So that you're reading with the children. And whenever we read in the lower grades, and both of you are, are above K, one and two, but when we read with the lower grades, well, Annette, you do have some lower grades. When we bring those younger children together, we read and they listen to the teacher read. Well, first, when we give them their book, we're gonna have them do a, a picture walk as we go through our book. And just look at the book, come, become acquainted with the pictures, the words that they see on the pages as they guess what the book is about. Then once we start the reading, the children listen as the teacher reads the page. Very simple. You can see that there's not that many words on the page because it's for younger children. Then the teacher will read it again. This time she'll read a sentence. The students repeat after her. She'll read another sentence. Students repeat. So they echo read. So then um, the students will um, end up reading, the teacher will read a sentence and then they will read the next sentence. So we have um, a pattern and uh, steps that are taken in reading a book. And here are some students that are reading that book. Then the other anchor book is God Makes a Plan. So we have two anchor books that are used in the very beginning of the year. Now, sentence strips. As the students read the book, then the, the teacher will ask, hmm, what do you remember about this particular book? And the students will tell the teacher what they remember. The student teacher will then write what the student is saying on a sentence strip. Then the student students will place the sentences in order. Now, the students will um, read, you have one student that acts as a teacher as the students read. Let's just listen for just a few seconds. You're going to have students 
planets at d on different levels. Three angels in the sky. It's working. Oh my. Okay, oh great. My. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Now, those students were reading what we had already written. And then once they finish, all of those sentence strips are placed in a center. And then the group will come together and read, as you see here. So the students take those same sentence strips, and in their group, they're going to try to put them in order and read them. So that becomes a station where they will review what they have read. And then there have been times when I've actually taken the strips, cut them, and the students will place them in sentence order. Then something else that we have that you could place in the reading station. We have the three angels messages that are simplified for, it's written in very easy language so that children will understand. So this is a chart that they've used in the classroom, and then it can be placed in the center where they can review the chart. They could write a few words about what each angel has said. And um, then they can, they can actually, once they've written it, they can actually make an activity book. So you want to include paper and pencil in each area so that the students can review those skills. This um, particular curriculum also includes watercolor, which is an art program. And I loved it so many times in our elementary schools, we may not have a separate art teacher, um, especially if you're teaching, um, if you're teaching multi grades. Many times we don't, we're not in a school where we have a PE teacher and an art teacher and a music teacher. We're doing it all. So um, this particular program includes a watercolor program where the children actually learn the skills in um, in painting. So they learn how to paint wet on wet, wet on dry, and they understand what that means. There's a word that's used. Um, they learn what resist, crayon resist, where you actually use crayon on paper, draw the picture, such as when they're making their clouds, when they uh, paint the blue right over those white clouds, the white pops through. That's resist, crayon resist. And then we compare that to the devil and how the devil at causes us or he tries to tempt, uh, tempt us to do wrong and we have to resist the devil. So they will actually make a book. This can be included in one of the stations. So then you have your listening activities. In um, the K2 program, they have uh, stories that the children listen to in K2A and in K2B, they actually have stories that they can listen to and watch. Those stories are on a, um, uh, you can actually watch them on YouTube, the stories that actually have um, the animation. And then those that we just listened to, they're on a thumb drive that can be placed in an, a station for the children. I'm gonna talk about the book Who Can in just a moment because they're, they use QR codes and the children can just um, listen to each page by clicking on the QR code. Then we have stories. Now the, the um, newest, one of our newest uh, books or new stories I have uh, taken from my own childhood and um, some of my teaching experiences. And the children can listen to these stories and draw pictures. So they have, they're embedded in, in a PowerPoint. And now instead of six, we have, all of them have been completed. I'm going to give you an opportunity to hear part of that. The Banty. Help, Daddy, help, I know. Get this chicken off me. My heart was beating fast and I tried to run, but the chicken kept pecking my head and hands. I screamed even louder. Where was daddy? Could he hear me? It was late springtime and our family lived in Germantown, Ohio. Germantown is a rural area with cows, goats, chickens, pigs, and horses in about every farmyard. As far as farms go, our family only had chickens and ducks, 
a large strawberry patch, and a vegetable garden. The strawberry patch was loaded with plump, ripe fruit. There were huge berries, and we knew Mommy would probably make strawberry shortcake for Sabbath dinner. That was a favorite dessert in our family every summer. Earlier that morning, we had helped Daddy plant tomatoes, green beans, and cabbage. We dug holes, placed the plant in the hole, added water, and then covered it. It was a dirty job, but it was fun. Once we finished the garden, we hoped to join our neighbors for a game of kickball. But first, I had a plan. I couldn't wait to show my mom I was a big girl. I was so excited. I would surprise mommy and get all the eggs this morning, I said to myself. Now daddy had explained to all of us, the banty hen has been out of control and acting fierce and angry for the last few days. Do not go into the coop. I knew Daddy was serious about us not going into the chicken coop. I knew what Daddy said, but I just wanted to get the eggs and see my mommy smile and be proud of me. You see, I was the oldest, and I just wanted to prove I was a big girl. So I looked around, discovered my brother and sisters playing on the other side of our large yard, and knew it was my chance to enter the coop. Hey, little chickens, move over and let me get the eggs. I spoke out loud to the chickies. As I walked, the chickens did move to the side so I could pass by, but suddenly, out of nowhere, Mama Banty flew right toward my head, squawking. Help, Daddy, help, I screamed. Get the chicken! I screamed again and again. Ouch! Ouch! Help me, Daddy! The banty sharp beak sent stabs of pain into my head and hands. I could hear my brother and sister yelling, Yvette! Yvette! Just as I thought I could take it no longer, Daddy grabbed the banty with his strong hands and pulled her away from me. Oh, was I relieved. I was never so happy to see my daddy in all my life. He took me to the house and mommy gasped. Then she got out a warm cloth and began cleaning the wound. I did get my mom's attention all right, but that was not the kind of attention I'd wanted. Instead of making mommy proud and happy, I caused her heart to break as she cleaned up all the awful red marks on me. And you know, boys and girls, when I think about Jesus and his love for me, I think about that day. My parents loved me. My dad risked his own safety to grab that old hen. And my mom's heart was breaking as she cleaned up those nasty wounds. Even though I did something wrong, my mom and dad were there for me, rescuing me from danger, cleaning me up, and making me better, just like Jesus and the first angel's message. I did have a question. Um, the thumb yeah. drive. Do we have a thumb drive that comes with the set? Yeah, it does. Oh, okay. Thumb okay. drop drive has so many activities for the teacher. So you'll find a lot of resources there for you. So I'm going to stop this now. This is the story. But you can hear the story. You see the bright, colorful pictures. And then the children, after hearing the story, they can actually draw a picture. Um, they can write a sentence. I had second graders, and later on my first graders too, they were able to write a sentence about what they wanted. The second graders wrote three sentences, the first graders one sentence about what they listened to. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. 
So then the book, this is the Who Can book that I had mentioned to you. And um, I'm going to step right outside of this. There, Here's a QR code. Now, during teachers convention, they were able to actually pull it up using their phone. I don't know if you'll be able to do that. But when you click on the QR code, you're able to hear a song about that particular uh, continent. Now, this book covers all the continents. And so it includes social studies. So when we say when we say that that this the this particular program is integrated, it's Bible, it's literacy, and for this book, it's also social studies. So the students will learn about all the continents. And the beautiful thing about it is, for each continent, the music changes, and so it sounds like the music that you could hear from that continent. So from North America. They have Jamaica, so you hear some of the reggae music. You go to another country and you'll hear the um, instruments and the music from that particular from that particular country. And we'll talk, I'll show you that in just a moment. So now the requirements for the vocabulary or word work, you wanna provide activities in, an air, in um, this area of literacy also. You wanna make sure that it's multi-level as we talked before. And you want to make sure that it can be completed independently. So select, um, when you select the activities that the students are able to do, these are activities that they already have experience doing in the classroom. And then we have actual, actually added some activities so, um, in the teacher's guide so that you don't have to guess or wonder, what can I place in the center? We provide all of that for you. So when you receive your packet, you're going to see the vocabulary cards. You're going to, um, you're going to receive the um, thumb drive, as we mentioned before, all of the booklets. You'll see, receive the art paper for the um, watercolor as well as the booklet. So everything you need. And we've written lesson plans for you. So everything is there. That's why we said you can actually take a break from, from um, the uh, Bible program. Maybe after you've completed a unit, our regular Bible program, you can work with um, Three Angels for Kids for two to four weeks and everything is there for you and then go back to our, our regular Bible program. So we want you to provide, we want to also uh, make sure you have a, provided a method for the students to self-check. And then just so that it will last, we just recommend that you laminate all of the work. So here I am again, I'm showing them, we're working with the contractions um, as one of the skills. And then these cards will be placed in the station and the, all mixed up. And then the children can, are able to um, work with contractions. Um, we, we talk about syllabication. So the students um, need to, they learn what are syllables? What are the word parts? And so um, this is another activity that can be placed in the center after the students have learned in their class. So for example, revelation, they learn how to clap, you know, those syllables out. And then for an activity, one of the things I did, I had numbers so they could place a three, a four, a two next to the word. But in the classroom, we count it out. They shun or tap it on the desk. Um, sometimes once I have all the centers, children are moving from one center to the next where clapping could disturb others. They just tap on their desk, um, the, the syllables. Now, guided reading. This is when the, the students are actually reading with the teacher. When you pull students to read, it's a homogeneous, homogeneous grouping. So you want to make sure if you've assessed your students, you're pulling students on the same grade level for guided reading. So we have the students at four different areas in the classroom. They're at their centers. And I decide, okay, as a teacher, I'm getting ready to have my guided reading. So then I might call the, hmm, the tigers. They already know. What, who they are. So you have students coming from all of the groups coming together the table to read. And this is when we review the, their reading skills. They're learning how to decode 
So they're, they're, this is the very beginning, you know, so I have kindergarten where they're actually learning how to decode words. Um, we read together. Sometimes while children are reading, you may assess a student at the table. Um, as a teacher, you could read one-on-one -on -one with the group at the table while everyone else is reading or completing an activity. You go to a, the side of a student and work with just that one student or discussion of some of the stories that you have read. So the difference with guided reading, it's a homogeneous grouping. They're all on approximately the same level so that you can work with skills that they actually need. You know, sometimes we hear the word scaffolding and differentiation. Um, and, and sometimes I hear people using that word um, uh, as if they, they're the same, those two words, excuse me, as if they were the same. But scaffolding is what we do first with students. Um, we might break our learning into chunks or provide a tool or a structure for them to learn a skill. But when it comes to differentiation, that's when sometimes you may need to actually modify or provide an entirely different text for a student or students so that um, they're able to do so at their level. Now, five steps to, grading, to guided reading success. We want to select a book for them to read, and then we introduce that book to the students. So we select it, we've already assessed them, there we, so it's on their level. We introduce that book to the students, and the students, they might have them do a picture walk or whatever. We will go over some of the vocabulary, um, maybe some questions to ask them, that we want them to answer as they read the book. They read their book and then they respond to the book. We ask them questions and then we assess them. Um, uh, each time you assess a student, you're not assessing them every day. But when I say we assess their reading behaviors, many times you will keep notes of each child and their behaviors, how they're reading and how they're improving. And that will help you as a teacher. Now we mentioned our, um, as our, the, the different centers, one of our last ones is puppets and a puppet show, have puppet show. This particular one, I don't know if you've heard of Puppet Pals. It is on um, an app that you can get for the iPad. And I know they were working on um, being able to use that with other, other uh, computers also, but at least I know they have it with the iPad and this, it's such an amazing app. The children enjoy it, they love it. And um, they're able to work independently to set up a puppet show. Now they include pictures of characters or you can use um, some of the puppets that I'm gonna show you in just a moment that come with the, um, in the teacher's guide that they can place on a stick and, and you know, kind of reenact the story. But let me show you how Puppet Pals works. I love this one. Now here's the cardstock that you will find, the puppets that you'll find in the back of the teacher's guide. And they're able to retell the story here. Three angels in the sky. Oh my, oh my, oh my. The first angel said, give God the glory. He's always fair and good and true. He'll do what's right for me and you. He made the earth and outer space. Now go and tell in every place. The, the second angel said, the city's going down. Watch out, be safe, get out of town. <laughs> the third angel said, be patient, trust Jesus in light and dark. He'll always protect you like Noah in the ark. Three angels in the sky to show the love of God on high. And when their story said and done, we all look up and see God's son. All right, so this particular little puppet show was done by the children. They cut out, you can see how they cut the, they cut, you know, they cut out the little characters and they move it around with their hands. So although once it's, it comes together, you don't even see their fingers. So they're actually moving it all around with their hands and they were 
completing, they actually, that was the entire book, Three Angels in the Sky, and they were saying it from memory when they did that. So um, the kids, once they completed, the whole class has fun watching it. So you can imagine going to the centers and listening to your classmates, listening to their puppet show that they have created. Now here is a picture of some of the watercolor books that the students completed. I just thought the pictures were beautiful, vibrant colors, and they learned crayon resist. And um, they actually, at the end of the book, they write about the author, they learn about how to do that, and they have a dedicatory page where they dedicate their books to someone. All right, now I'm wondering if you have any questions and I'll come out of our, our um, the PowerPoint, but I also want to show you if you would like to contact us at all, um, this is our website. We also have a YouTube page. Our, first, our Facebook group page is for teachers. Once they're actually involved in the uh, curriculum, you can post pictures or projects that you have done. There was one class where they actually um, did a, a newscast <laughs> using three angels for kids. And that is on our, our group page now. And then if there's any trainings in the area of literacy um, or um, whether it's our reading program, uh, we've even had people ask us to give uh, trainings in writing and so forth. Just let us know. This is my my um, email, Yvette at threeangelsforkids.com and then Dr. Duran, Sandy at threeangelsforkids.com. All right. Do you have any questions about what we discussed tonight? Well, I'll have questions, but probably later once I get the material. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, yeah you sent the email, so that was helpful. Okay. Yeah, it makes it more difficult when you haven't received the, the um, curriculum as of yet. Now, this was the, one of the core books I mentioned, Three Angels in the Sky. And, um, oh, the children love it. And when you have multi-grades, you can use this all the way through uh, fourth grade or so. And even the um, upper grades have worked with the younger children with this particular book. Um, the three, four... Since um, Annette, you have all the way through, we have K through eight. One through eight. One through eight. Then I used, I had, I had, um, I didn't have any first and second graders, but I had three through eight. And I actually used the three, four um, curriculum, uh, Beth and the three angels and Jasmine and the, and the three angels fair. I use that with everyone. And the way it's set up, my eighth graders and seventh graders were still challenged and enjoyed the program as well as the younger ones. All right, this is the chart we were talking about with the three angels messages where everything is so is simple for them to understand. And this is the book I wanted to show you. This is the book, Who Can? This is one of our newest books. And on each page, there is a QR code. And um, I'm just going to very quickly, um, I, and I looked on Amazon, and you can get a QR reader for less than $20, but um, you take your QR code here on my camera. And um, so I use my phone and then I click on it and you can hear the song. Well, can you hear it? So this is Nepal. So that's from India. Yes, we can hear. <laughs> Great. So that you can click on any page and you'll hear the words are there and the words have been put to music. So the children are able to listen and then read, read the book. Okay. And then of course, as I said, everything comes, everything's in the teacher's guide that you will need, no matter what grade level you're teaching. Um, for since you have K, I'm into one through eight, in the fifth and sixth grade readers, that particular program is a writing program. You have 10 booklets. And the nice thing about that, it's written on three different grade levels in each booklet so that when you have them read the story, they can open it up. And if you have a child that's 
not reading at grade level, no one ever knows, which is so important when it comes to middle school. You don't know if they're reading on page five where the lower, uh, lower level reader is or page eight where the upper grade or not upper grade, but upper level of reading is um, higher level of reading for those children that they can still be challenged, all right? Um, any, any questions at all? Well, I hope you enjoyed it. And I just hope your, your curriculum comes soon because that is so, it would make it so different. Once, once you see that, you would know what I'm referring to. In the, in the book. But thanks so much for coming on, ladies. And I just pray that God will continue to bless you throughout your school year. Thank you so much. I appreciate thank it. You. Yes, okay. thank you so much. And wow, one through eight. And here am I, like <laughs> three to five and, and having to do the office. So ooh, <laughs> God bless you. Yes, well, I need your prayers. <laughs> we'll do yeah. that. So I'm just going to pray that God will be with both of you throughout the, of the school year. If we can just close with prayer at this oh, time. Yes. Thank you. Dear Jesus, it's been a nice evening. I pray that you will please be with Tricia and Annette. Bless them, Lord, in their classroom. The challenges that they will face this year, I know that you'll be right there with mm -hmm. them. The, the, the celebrations that they will experience this year, mm -hmm. you will be right there with them. And Lord, I pray that you will grant them the desires of their heart throughout this mm -hmm. school year. We look forward to seeing how you will bless. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Miss Yvette. Have Thank a good you, evening. God bless you. Bye -bye. God bless you too. Thank you. Bye-bye.